the hobbits do have some advantages. They're girthier, probably a little bit heavier from all those snacks and napping, second, third, fourth breakfasts or whatever. They got sticky hands that they use to rip things apart. Like the gnomes have balaclavas and pointy hats, swords. I get the feeling the swords might be what makes the big difference here. Definitely seems like cutting into those semi-formal clothes is making quite the impact. What's up guys, welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, where for today's episode, I do have a whole bunch more weird and funny player created units for us to check out, and so we may get to that, but first, I think we're gonna get gnomed. Ooh! This is a custom campaign called the Gnome Revolution, where I'm guessing the new gnome faction wants to die? Like, I should probably warn you little dollar store Oompa Loompas that the last thing that was three foot two and tried to screw with me was the Hobbit. And I've been bombing the Shire like it's an oil rich country ever since. So maybe just don't. Oh, hold up a second. I'm gnomes too. But I can only control the rebel, apple archer, rogue butcher, exiled warrior, and gnome warlord. That is a great username. I'm going to be using that in the future. Like, I just assumed that we'd be able to use all of the tabs factions and custom units and whatever we want to try to crush the new gnome faction. I, I promise we'll do that eventually, okay? That is way too good not to try. But for now, it seems like gnome civil war is the only thing on the menu. So this is a level called the Town Guard, where I'm guessing the gnomes don't want to let me into Gnomeville? I, I can't imagine why, it's not like I've already threatened their civilization. I also have no idea what any of these units do, other than stand in old ladies' gardens and make me feel uncomfortable. I kind of want to try the Apple Archer. If I can set them up on the other side of the river, then maybe they'll be able to use the terrain to their tiny advantage. I could also go with a Rogue Butcher? Yeah. Let's try that. Sure, why not? They're so little. <laughs> oh, guys, come on. Watch the friendly fire. Oh. Why is it only just now dawning on me that a bow and apple is not nearly as lethal as a bow and arrow? <laughs> right? These guys are about as dangerous as a middle school lunchroom food fight. Oh, and the enemy has shields, which are surprisingly effective against fruit. <laughs> No, <laughs> I've already made a huge tactical and strategic slip up. You gotta be kidding me. Well, at least their guns also fire apples. That's good to know. It is kind of weird that they have access to apple guns when I only have apple larchers. Like, you would think that gnome society would have one consistent technology, but whatever's causing this civil war has made two very distinct factions. <laughs> Like, I shouldn't be theorizing about gnome lore. Okay, I gotta focus on how I'm gonna cut them into pieces. Maybe the rogue butcher? We tried one, but he kind of got dropped right off the bat. I, I could go all offense, whereas they have quite a bit of defense. Your shields aren't gonna do a whole lot against our many swords, hopefully. I like how they're the more standard garden gnome with the silly robes, whereas my guys have goggles and vests. They look like they're straight out of Mad Max. These apples are doing absolutely nothing. Come on, guys, you got this. Please, please tell me you got this. Oh, this is gonna be close. This is gonna be real close. I did not expect to see an intense gnome sword fight today. Oh, 1v1. Come on, don't get hit by an apple. That's all that I care about right now. How are we losing this? Why is this gonna be so much more difficult than I had expected? What if we tried fighting fire with fire and played the numbers game? Because I can have my 10 rebels face off against their seven, I think. And then they've got a couple of apple gunners, but we've already proven that the apple gunner is completely useless against the shield. We can make them come to us. That way they could be the ones to have a hard time getting across that gigantic bridge. See, in all reality, it's hard to tell that they're gnomes. Like, obviously, the pointy hats are a dead giveaway, but like, there's nothing for scale. We don't have regular tabs units stomping them into the dust. Ooh, I think this is going well. Come on, guys. Why are my gnomes wearing balaclavas? <laughs> That's a little weird. Yeah, your apples aren't gonna be any use here. There we go, come on. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, keep up the blocking. A little bit more stabbing. Would thoroughly appreciate it. Are we good? 
We're good. I've never been so relieved to kill a gnome in my life. Conquering Gnomeville is definitely a big moral victory, but we need to seize the means of production. We need to control the fields, which is why we're going to take on the farm guard, where it looks like the gnome's golf ball sized brains have decided to double down on the apple armaments. <laughs> and they also have their version of the butcher. I I'm going to call it the berserker, I guess, because it's not the same as my butcher, which is really interesting. And it's making me wonder if I'm actually the bad guy because we've got exiled warriors like they were removed from society. How about we bring them back from exile to kick some ass? <laughs> Hopefully you guys could do something with those swords. We'll put a rebel up front. He should be able to use his shield to block that initial fruit volley, kind of. I mean, it would have been nice if he survived, but he served his purpose. You guys can dodge apples? That's perfect! You got funny little raccoon masks too. Okay, just cut these guys down and then move on because they're gonna tag you eventually. You really don't wanna give them all the time in the world to get their shots off. Yes, this is going so well. I mean, they got a kind of titty flop to avoid the produce, but that's perfectly fine. We are gonna kill them, right? Don't make me eat my words and these apples. Just cut them down for the love of God. It's a four on four. We have to have this in the bag. Was this a first try? Exiled warrior, first try. This is why you deserve your spot in Gnomeville. You're back! It's really starting to feel like the Gnome Emperor is getting desperate. So after losing a couple of battles, he's launched a night ambush. Once again, they've got their apple guns and I don't know what all these berserkers are looking at. I'm guessing it's so dark that they can't see in front of their tiny noses. Uh, let's use that to our advantage, shall we? How about we put down a couple of gnome warlords? Have them backed up with some apple archers. I don't mind a few. Then rebel frontline should be able to get the job done. Oh, okay. Wasn't expecting the warlord to be that effective. They went balls deep on the gunners. <laughs> Are you kidding me? These things are nuts! <laughs> what was that? Honestly though, I thought they were just gonna be like an old man with a real big sword, but they absolutely crushed them. I think we may have reached a tipping point in this gnome war because this battle is very different. It's called Warlord Defense, where we've got our warlords who's currently being stationed at the mouth of a cave with a non-gnome. Weird. And then because of that, the battlefield has been switched. We're now on the opposite side and on defense. The enemy is here, but I can use however much of whatever I want. I've got infinite resources. It's like I've taken over society. And I don't know why I decided to use so many apple archers, but you know what? That works for me. Our apples will blot out the sun. <laughs> Please tell me I used enough. I'm always afraid. Uh, could you maybe hang out back there? I know you really want to get into the battle, but you're supposed to be protected. Are, you're, you're dead, but it says that I won. I'll take it. Look at this guy quake in his little Fisher Price sized boots. As soon as the shoe is on the other foot and we're the ones in control, then suddenly they want to be the rebels and they want an uprising and they're afraid they're all going to die for good reason because I'm bringing in the warlords. I'm bringing them all in. Summon the warlords and kaboots. I should really try to make these a little bit more entertaining, last a little bit longer, you know, add some suspense to things, but at the same time, I just love crushing them so much. Well, I'll be damned if it isn't the Gnome King himself with his royal guards. Or former Gnome King, actually. I'm the new Gnome King. Please remove yourselves from my front lawn, otherwise I'll have to do it myself. I'll summon my Gnome Warlords. Maybe a couple of rebels over here and a couple of apple archers over there. <laughs> Exiled warriors, yep, they want in on this. Even though I'm quickly running out of gnome funds. Hopefully that's okay. I don't suppose you guys could just gun it straight for the king. Oh, the king's got some moves of his own. That could be a problem. <laughs> I 
really just want that crown. I don't care if we get rid of all the dissidents or not. You just leave them. They'll rot on the lawn eventually. It's kind of what gnomes do. Oh crap. Oh, okay. The archers are actually holding their own. They're not gonna hold their own against that many guns though. Oh no, please. Please, guys, I've always believed in you. If you could just assassinate that king real quick, I would love you forever. Come on, come on, come on, please. <laughs> you little useless Judases, I swear to Christ. <laughs> See, now we've got ourselves a bit of a problem. A little problem, a king-sized problem, because if I can't properly depose him, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. I mainly just need the keys to the castle, okay? Could somebody maybe pick through his pockets? I'm gonna put warlords over here hoping that they'll dive straight at the gunners. I want them out of the way first. The exiles can actually take care of the melee units. And then I could put, I guess, rebels scattered around, because this is where the king is gonna go. He could dive into them and they'll just be king fodder. <laughs> Come on, guys, please. There we go, perfect. <laughs> They're not getting back up after that. Okay, well, maybe I won't bother finishing my sentences. <laughs> Enough with the trick shots, okay? I don't want this behind the back shenanigans. Just cut these guys in half. <laughs> Please, treat them like firewood. It doesn't need to be all that interesting. Where are you going? Oh, the king is wiping the floor with us, isn't he? Is, is he still over there? Is he alive? It's so hard to tell which one of them is the king. <laughs> I think we're doing well, right? That guy should be the last one left. Kill him, yes! All oh, praise the Gnome King! You gotta be kidding me right now. How many times am I gonna have to kill you, old man? This is a level called Short-Lived King, where I'm guessing the king managed to resurrect himself, like some kind of stubby Jesus at the Church of the Wobbly Horse. Either way, it doesn't matter. We're gonna put him back in the ground. I like that strategy of putting the warlords on the end and having them charge into the apple gunners. Oh, bad news for you guys. It looks like when I got the keys to the castle, I also got the keys to the coffers, which means I've now got my fingers in the country's coin purse. I can spend whatever I want. Yeah, let's do a little something like this. Go, my loyal gnomes. Show them who's your new king. It's so hard to follow the madness. Not only because they're so little, but because the weapons are so strange. You don't exactly have like fast moving projectiles and a, a, a lot of like hand to hand combat. It's just the strangest warfare. They're bouncing around. They can barely hold things. Either way, that has to be it. Please put the tiny crown on my head. That's what I'm talking about. Long live Gnomeski! Now, even though the Gnome Civil War has ended, that doesn't mean that our country isn't ready to go to war against the other factions. I, I think it's time for the Gnomes to take over all of Tavs. Let's start our Gnome Conquest against the Tribal Faction. You know, we already know them. They got pointy sticks instead of pointy hats. But I'm thinking if we play our cards right, we may be able to have them worship us as the manlets that we truly are. The only problem is, I don't have a whole lot of money to match them with. Gnomes are surprisingly expensive. You know, to train, because they're not the brightest, and to equip, because getting weapons that tiny is custom. I don't really know how we're gonna match them, but I think that's it. We're definitely outnumbered, almost two to one, and outsized, two to one. Is the gnome faction a mistake? Hopefully, we have an ace up our sleeve. Like the warlord, come on, gnomeski. You got this, just keep up chucking them. There we go. All of my faith relies on you. I think he's dead. Can confirm he is dead. The gnome faction may not be ready for world conquest quite yet. If there's gonna be twice as many of them and they're gonna be twice as tall as us, then I think it's only fair that I get to spend twice as much money. L let's see if that's gonna make for at least an interesting war. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more warlords in here. Maybe a couple of butchers and a rebel or two. 49, 5,000. Okay, that's about double. See if that does anything. This at least looks like it's gonna be more of a fight. 
<laughs> the warlords are a, a little kamikaze for my taste. I appreciate the fact that they can kick big guys in the nuts because it's a very high kick, but... Oh, yes. We managed to cut through them. Like, the masses are charging forward. Okay, that feels quite a bit better. Right, I forgot that the tribal faction was loosely associated with Snuffy. They tend to have an agreement in place to defend one another. If the size difference wasn't a problem before, it definitely is now. Actually, I've got my own Snuffy that's dwarf-sized. <laughs> Maybe I should go ahead and call up a couple of them? Seems only fair. <laughs> I don't know how these baby Snuffies are gonna manage to fight. Oh my god. <laughs> it has been a while since I've seen little bodies like that get absolutely crushed. No, no, get off. Oh, that makes me so sad. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Snuffy may be just a little bit too beefy for the gnome faction. I couldn't wait to tread on the farmer faction's turf because they bring us something really interesting. This is going to be the one and only time that the Hobbit gets to fight in its own weight class. And you better believe that I'm going to wipe the fields with them. And obviously, I want to make it kind of fair. It's going to be 12 versus 12. We're just going to use gnome rebels. And if anything, you know, the hobbits do have some advantages. They're girthier, probably a little bit heavier from all those snacks and napping, second, third, fourth breakfasts or whatever. They got sticky hands that they use to rip things apart. Like the gnomes have balaclavas and pointy hats, swords. I get the feeling the swords might be what makes the big difference here. Definitely seems like cutting into those semi-formal clothes is making quite the impact. <laughs> Come on, guys, finish him off with a shield bash. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Gnome for life. Well, to no one's surprise, the rest of the farmer faction was a little pissed off to hear that their neighbors got brought to pound town. <laughs> and they don't want us stealing their crops and firing them out of our weapons. Oh man, I, I I just, I never know what to do with this faction. It's so weird because our, our units are small and easy to underappreciate. Yeah, we could go with some butchers and rebels, a warlord, and then, like, I don't know how we're going to come up with a strategy to face off against crows that are the same size as we are. Hopefully that works. Oh, I went one for one though. I could have spent even more. Okay, we'll try this. If it doesn't work, then we'll up the value, but I feel pretty good about this. As long as the gnomes don't get a little too drunk. Come on, guys. I know you got tiny little bodies, but you gotta get up, get in there. Swing for the fences. We are so small in comparison. Now that we can finally see the scale difference. We're up to their knees! Oh no, that, that probably makes the effects of the potions even stronger, right? Just a, a little thimble of beer and we're ready to pass out. Ah, oh, crap. We didn't even get to the point of having to worry about the birds. Oh, here they come and screw everything. So let's build on that strategy. We could use a couple of apple archers because I wouldn't mind having something hang back and not dive into the fray. We could use another warlord who will dive into the fray, but that's fine. <laughs> Maybe a couple more exiles and a couple more butchers and a couple more rebels and then we're good to go. That's a roundabout 2.0. Just gotta get across the bridge. The warlord dive gets me every single time. It's always just so ballsy. Now, it doesn't matter if some of you guys get drunk so long as some of you stay sober enough to keep chucking apples at our enemies' faces. Flawless. We never even got to see the scarecrow die. I can appreciate that the farmer faction would have a last ditch effort in place to try to save their livelihood, but I don't understand why Terry is rubbing his nipples up against Fred. That seems a little weird. I swear that dude is gonna build up enough of a static charge to light up a Christmas tree. Hopefully this choke point does us favors instead of them because they can't easily get across. Oh, they squeaked through. That's definitely a problem when you're the size of roadkill. Come on, guys. I think this is going well. Bob Ross is a beefy boy, but we managed to kick him into the stratosphere. This worked flawlessly. Yeah. 
Okay, there, there are a couple of them that are stuck in the river. Oh, um, yeah, I don't think the gnomes can swim. So how are we gonna get to that? that that's a problem because you guys are just dumb enough to dive into the water. Oh, okay. We managed to jostle some free. I think we lost one, but as long as we can give Bob the boot, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah, bit of a low blow, but there are no rules in no more. Of course the medieval faction likes to think that they own the castle. Like, isn't that just cute? Guys, I know you really appreciate my kind on your lawns, but the feeling isn't reciprocated. Please get the hell off. Get appled. You know what, I, I wanna give the apple archer a second crack at life. We're gonna use a whole bunch of them here and then just have a couple of rebels delaying the enemy so that we can blot out the sky with produce. I think this could work in a strange world. Hmm, metal armor is not showing any signs of wear against our fruit folly. <laughs> Come on, guys. Oh, they've got healers, I forgot about that. That could be a problem. I don't know if we could do enough damage to keep up, but it looks like we're getting close. Oh, yeah, suck it, King. You're eventually gonna give up. <laughs> yes, archers, go. Show that you are the superior archer. This guy's got no idea. <laughs> okay, I, I, I still think that they're a bad unit, but they're funny, and that's really all I care about. Here's a test that I really haven't been looking forward to, because like I don't know how the gnomes are gonna manage to breach a phalanx, considering the shields are like the size of a wall compared to them. But I'm not gonna use the gnome warlord, at least not yet. This is too easy, he's gonna treat these things like bowling pins. Instead, I wanna see if the butcher can pull it off. It didn't have great results against the rebels, but hopefully if we do something like that, They'll be able to get in and around. You guys got swords, come on now, don't get pushed around. Oh, they got absolutely pushed around. It was worse than I expected. Did we kill, I think we may have killed one, but uh, he may have also just tripped. Now hear me out, what if we only used a couple pieces of cannon fodder and then the rest were warlords? because the Warlords seem to be the only unit that can actually fight. So hopefully they can survive long enough to strike from behind in numbers. If we get three or four of you guys protecting each other's backs and striking your opponents, then maybe we'll get somewhere. I like seeing blue bodies fly around, that's the good stuff. How do they have so much kicking power in those tiny legs? Yes, yes, exactly. So. If we've learned anything today, it's that all gnomes are useless except for the warlords. You know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And the gnome faction is definitely interesting, but a little restricted. I would have liked to see at least like half a dozen more units because there's so many possibilities for the stuff that you can create in this game. And it's really fun playing with units that are a completely different scale and skill set and stuff like that. So I see a lot of promise in this. And if you guys wanna see more, as always, be sure to leave a like in the video, leave a comment letting me know, and maybe I'll return to learn more about how they're not a gnome. They're not a gnoblin. They're a gnome. You just got gnomed. Bye.